I'm Catherine Menachino from Elevate for Self Love, where we discuss self respect, self worth, and self love. Today's topic is going to be fake friendships. I know some of you have dealt with that before. I just dealt with that very recently. And um, I want to talk about how that impacts your life and how that can affect you just as much as toxic relationships. So, before I start, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe and the bell icon so you can get all my videos going forward and be alerted. So you need to hit the bell and then you can pick all usually. That way you'll get an alert every time I post a new video. Fake friendships are a lot of times with younger people. So I remember years ago, there was a lot more fake friendships and I feel like now that I'm older there aren't as many because people are just like a little bit more honest I guess about not wanting to be friends or being friends and I think most people prefer to have someone be upfront like for me personally I would rather someone tell me I hate you I don't like you or completely avoid me altogether and then I know that person is not part of my tribe. That person is not my kind of person. We don't, we're, not, we're not vibing. There's no, you know, connection there. Fake friends are people that pretend there's a connection, but it's not real. And I guess people may do this for a lot of reasons. They may be doing it because they want to get something from you. You know, um... It could be a lot of different things. Maybe they want um, to use you for your knowledge, for money, for for various things, um, for your influence, to get to know people that you know. I, it could be you know many different things, but essentially they may do it for that reason. They may do it for that. They may do it so that you praise them. So they might be looking for an ego boost. So if they if if they're if they pretend to like you and then you in turn admire and, and praise them and act like they're great as well, they might just be looking for that ego boost. Maybe they just need someone to pick up their self-esteem or, you know, whatever. And narcissists do this a lot, but in general, toxic people, um, I think, play this game, I guess. it's it, People that are healthy and um, consistent individuals don't do this because there's no point it's like if you don't like someone just don't spend time with them go you know just avoid that person and but just be honest you know people that are looking people that do this fake friendship thing or this and put on this this show they're not healthy people a lot of times it's narcissists who are looking for supply you know they want to use you for something it's a very classic narcissism trait right like it's the whole thing about what narcissism is is looking for like why they stay in relationships why they stay is because they're getting supply they're getting something from you and it could be adoration and it could be money and it could be companionship and it could be an ego boost it just you just really don't know and a lot of people in those relationships have no idea what they're being used for but they know something's not right but other people that are not narcissists also do this and I think you know I just had a situation where I thought someone was my friend they they slowly over like a few months came into my life you know stronger and stronger and then started contacting me every day and, and wanting to like be around me and and I like being with them and I was helping them like kind of get their life sorted out and then they had some misfortunes in life and I was helping them try to get out of those misfortunes and I was feeling very compassionate I was feeling very needed um, and in a way I guess I fell into my codependency trap because at a certain point in time this person became toxic towards me and I still uh, interacted with that person I did cut off contact a few times but 
ultimately when the person came back around, I, I did allow for a reuniting. Um, so that was my fault and I, but I did lay down some boundaries and then at the end I, I did lay down pretty strong boundaries and this person disappeared. So I think you can tell the toxic people by the, the lack of consistency and by their actions not matching their words and just like your gut feeling. I think you get a gut feeling like something's not right. Like why isn't this person like following through on what they're saying? Like so this this situation I was in, the person I was, was friends with for like a few months was so complimentary and like so kind and so considerate and then this person changed. So that I found out during this period of time this person has bipolar and they're not medicated. So then it all made sense. It you know, I kind of knew while the first few months were happening that there were a couple things this person did that seemed a little inappropriate, a little bit manic, a little bit over the top. And I took note in my mind, oh, this person's acting that way, but I didn't realize until thinking it through more carefully that this person was probably hypomanic at that time. The few months that they were so happy and so into the friendship, they were hypomanic. Then they change into a depressive state. Once they turn into a depressive state, because they had some misfortunes and whatever changed in their mind, I have no idea, then they became angry at me for really no reason, no good reason. Um, like, you know, people, people that are bipolar or someone in depressive state usually has a lot of anger stuck inside. And I know this person grew up with a lot of trauma. I know this person probably has these issues because of how he grew up with all this trauma. And I had this like kind of idealistic compassion towards this person up until the point that this person really kind of started to become verbally abusive and do certain things that I felt were abusive tactics like manipulative um, and emotionally abusive at that point I had to say okay I can't be compassionate towards this person anymore this person is in a depressive state they have bipolar they're not medicated you know they obviously uh, this this friendship was never real because it was born out of a manic state and now it's doesn't exist any longer so Essentially, I had expectations that this person would continue to be my friend. I never realized that the person was going to change into a depressive state and being bipolar, they become like a different person. So, you know, I originally had let my guard down when meeting this person and letting this person into my life because I had a friend who knew this friend. And because of that, I didn't vet this person like I would normally vet this person. So the first thing you need to do when anybody new comes into your life is you have to vet this person and make sure that you don't let your guard down too early. I let my guard down pretty early with this person because I knew a friend of this friend and this friend was telling me this person's so great and so many wonderful things and I'm thinking, okay, but what I didn't know and I didn't learn until later was this person is bipolar and this person is not uh, behaving in the manner that this other friend had described. It wasn't at all the same person that this other friend described. So there must be, this person must be okay when, maybe when they're medicated. Maybe they act like that great person when they're medicated, but when they're not medicated, you don't know what you're going to get. And unfortunately, I got a lot of um, verbal abuse and, and manipulative behavior that wasn't healthy and it wasn't good for me. So first thing you need to do is vet people like off the bat. Uh, this also, I think, brought up a lot of feelings of betrayal because despite the fact that I know this person is sick, that they're not okay. Um, I think I just 
felt really betrayed because I was th- I thought I was building this wonderful friendship with this person and that it was going to be solid and it was something I really enjoyed. I enjoyed being with this person and the fact that now they didn't want to see me, they didn't want to talk to me or they they he would reach out sometimes but he needed something. So it was like um, you know, he was going through a difficulty and he needed my advice or he needed something from me. So it was never like a mutual friendship. It was just basically like um, him taking whatever he needed as far as using me for something. And that's not a friendship, right? So, you know, first you have to vet the people, see who to let in and, and to let your guard down and be careful. Secondly, even if you know a friend of a friend, don't go by what they're saying and just, you know, take take your time and, and see what this person's all about with your experience because you may have a very different experience. Um, betrayal is it's difficult because it's like a friendship that I thought I was going to have and then it was gone. So... Did this person mean to, you know, put on a charade and become two different people? I don't know. I don't know if this person did that on purpose. I don't know if this person is just, you know, not a good person and did this whole charade on purpose. I think it's more likely this person is just bipolar and they really don't realize what they're doing, you know, because bipolar people don't have self-awareness usually until they get a hold of themselves and they get medicated and they really do some work. So this person probably doesn't have the self-awareness, doesn't know what they're really doing and, you know, became a user without maybe even recognizing it. Although one time he did say to me, I don't want to use you. So I think he knew on a certain level that um, he was using me and that's a whole nother thing too. It's like, why would you pretend to really love being with someone and texting them every day, contacting them all the time and wanting to build this friendship and then shut it all off and then it, it's just, it doesn't make sense. Like if you like someone, you like someone and, and you guys and you spend time together and you enjoy each other. There's no like, you, it's very rare for someone to like being with someone and then all of a sudden randomly doesn't want to be your friend if you if nothing's happened nothing actually there was no um like I didn't do anything bad to this person I didn't um you know all I tried to do is to be there for this person to be compassionate and to help them and unfortunately when people are not mentally well it doesn't always go so well when you try to help them out and they turn on you and they get angry and they lash out at you and despite the fact that you're trying to be their friend, you're trying to be there for them, somehow they make you a bad person and it's just, it. they can do some some really nasty things and that's unfortunately what happened in this situation. So if, if you feel like you're being used, you probably are. You know, I had that feeling like I'm being used. I knew that was happening. I still maintain a distant, connection with this person because I did feel bad and it was also a friend of a friend. I didn't want to abandon this person. This person seemed like they really needed somebody. So I was trying my best to be there for this person who I know doesn't have a lot of people for support around them. And I wanted to be able to be that stable support. Unfortunately, like I said, this person turned around and was lashing out with anger, manipulative tactics and verbal abuse so um i had to i had to remove myself from the situation and i did i put down some boundaries there were a few times i actually removed myself then i went back in when they apologized but at this point most recently they did something that's so um so disrespectful that to me i'm out I'm just out, you know. Um, so pay attention to is is this friendship that you have, is it reciprocal? Do they like do as much for you as you do for them? Are they as respectful to you as you are to them? Are they helping you and caring about your life as much as 
you're caring about theirs. And, and if you talk to this person and you ask them about, if you ask them these questions, so for instance, I asked this person, do you realize that you never say, hey, Catherine, how are you? How's your day going or anything? You never ask me about myself. You only think about yourself. And this person got angry. That's a pretty good sign that that person is not really a friend because someone who is your friend, who maybe has been more self-centered lately because they're going through stuff, if you ask them, hey, do you realize that you're just only thinking about yourself? If they care about you, they're going to say, no, I didn't realize that I'm only thinking about myself and I'm really sorry. Um, like, let's, let's talk about it. They're not going to get angry at you and, you know, insult you or stonewall you or do any of these um, emotionally abusive things. So if someone does that, you know, you pretty much have to know that they don't care about you and it's time to make the exit, you know. Um, for me, this whole thing was so traumatic because it brought up a lot of my childhood memories and being bullied in school and how I didn't have that many friends when I was in elementary school. It, it cause, Because this person made me feel like they really liked me and all of my qualities as a person. And then they made me feel like I was worthless and I was a complete piece of garbage. And because there was such a flip in this person's perception of me, um, it really brought up like these feelings of unworthiness, uh, feelings of abandonment, feelings of when I was bullied as a kid. So there were like so many things that kind of started to kick up, feelings of rejection, you know, because this is a person too, like I completely trusted. I never thought that I was, I never, I never even dreamed that this person would reject me or act this way and, and change like this. I, I just like totally trusted this person because again, par partially that I knew the friend of the friend who said this person is trustworthy. So, you know, life is going to throw you like a lot of different people and sometimes these people are not going to be good to you. They might be good to you for a while. They might act like, you know, the nicest, most respectful person, which is this person did that for me. Um, but if they change, then you're dealing with the other person and whether they change because of mental illness or they change just because they're not a good person, it doesn't really matter. You know, um, you have to hold your own boundaries. So at the end, I had to lay out my boundaries and say, you know, I'll hang out with you if X, Y, Z, but otherwise I'm not. And this person never answered me. So pretty much like it, it was always going to be on their terms or no terms. If I had any terms, they were not important to this person. And that's okay. Like they can live their life and I will not be a support for this person. Um, I see this person, you know, going downhill in their life and I see how they're They've got these misfortunes that are causing them to go more into depression and having issues, but that's on them. Um, if somebody is going to treat me in an abusive way, I can't have that in my life. I have to protect myself. I have to put down boundaries and I have to have a standard of respect. So like to me, not answering my text messages for a few weeks, that's disrespectful. And then if someone comes around and they want to then talk to me and they don't apologize, that's not taking accountability. Someone that doesn't take accountability, someone that doesn't um, own their, their mistakes, that's not really going to work for me. It's not going to be someone that I keep in my life. It's going to, it's just, I'm going to let that go because I can't, you know, to me, I want consistency and I want healthy people around me, healthy people, healthy friends, reciprocal friendships. And when you have a fake friend who pretends to be, you know, your best friend and then they're not, it's just going to, it's just going to damage your self-esteem. It's going to damage your self-worth in the end. It's not going to be worth having that person in your life. They're just going to bring you down. It's, it's, it, I could feel how over time this friendship has brought me down. 
and it's made me really sad and at times and really hurt at times and it, it's not it's not worth it. You know, there's so many people that are my friends. I have so many friends and I'm so fortunate and blessed to have real friends. So the fact that this person, for whatever reason, I have no idea what the reason was, why they came into my life and pretended to like me. And I have no idea why they put on this big show, but they did. And then they changed, then they decided I they didn't want me in, in their life and they were going to uh, abuse me instead um why they did that I have no idea but all I know is it's not for me and it shouldn't be for you either because it life is hard enough like life is hard enough like we don't need people that are going to mess with our heads mess with our hearts pretend I mean like why not just be honest like if you like someone hang out with them if you don't 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 play these games like it just doesn't make sense. So I hope that you have the courage to lay down some boundaries with people that maybe are coming across as chaotic or confusing to you. Lay out your boundaries, what you will and won't, won't accept, and see what happens. If that person doesn't respond to you in a friendly, caring way, they're not your friend. They're not your friend. And your best bet is to just cut it off and let them go. And that's going to be sad. You're going to grieve that. But it's what you need to do. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Again, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.